Hello, welcome back to the last lecture for week four. In this lecture, we will see another example problem that can be solved using divide and conquer, the closest pair of points. Different from maximum subarray problem, this problem is from computer geometry, so we are looking at graphs. This is a quite interesting application of divide and conquer. Let's dive right in. The problem stays like this. Assume we have n points, each identified by its x and y coordinates. Our goal is to find the two points with the minimum distance between them. For this example graph here, by visual inspection, we know these two points are the closest pair. Applications of this problem include a system for controlling air or sea traffic, for instance. Um, they might need to identify the two closest vehicles in order to detect potential collisions. A special case input would be that two points are coincident, so they're on top of each other. They will be the closest pair since their distance is zero. Obviously, we can solve this problem in big O of n square time by computing the distance between all pairs of points. You may think that this is pretty much the best we can do. How can we further reduce the complexity? In fact, a clever divide and conquer design can help us eliminate enough of the pairwise distance calculations that we can achieve a lower complexity. Let's try to come up with a divide and a conquer solution. Recall that a divide and a conquer algorithm works the most efficient if we can divide the original problem instance into two equal halves. So we want to figure out a way to divide the points in this graph into two equal halves. In order to do that, first let's clarify the representation of this problem a bit further. Each point P is represented using its xi and yi coordinates. We sort the points based on their x coordinate and y coordinate, which gives us two lists of all the points sorted. In this graph here, we label the points from left to right. It makes it really easy to split the graph into a left and a right half between P6 and P7. Then we can recursively solve the problem on the left side and on the right side. Also note that the sorting algorithm will take us big O of n log n time. That's the best that we can do. You will soon see why we say sorting is one of the most fundamental tasks in computing. A lot of the algorithms we discuss in this course will use sorting as a pre-processing step. This instantly gives us n log n complexity. Now let's see if we can stay within this order. As always with the recursive divide and conquer algorithm, we first define the base case using a small value of the problem size, say four here. When there are four or less points in the graph, we solve the problem directly using brute force algorithm. This only takes a constant time. Then we divide the set of points into two halves based on their x-axis values. Call the same algorithm on both halves. Compare the results of the two halves and return the distance of the smaller one. For this example graph, on the left side of the dividing line, we have the smallest distance delta L between P2 and P4. And on the right side of the dividing line, we have the smallest distance delta R between P10 and P12. So delta will be the minimum between delta L and the delta R. So for this case, that'll be delta L. And we return delta. So are we done? Is this a complete and a correct algorithm? No. You see, often the tricky part of divide and conquer strategy is the combine step, where we also saw in the maximum subarray problem. So we missed some tricky cases. So what if the closest pair of points are on opposite sides of the dividing line? 
if we simply compute all the distances between points on the left and the points on the right, we are back with big O of n square complexity. Do we really have to compute all the distances? It seems that some pairs can be dropped. Recall we use recursive application of the algorithm to the left and the right halves of the set and compute the minimum distance on the left side, delta L, and the minimum distance on the right side, delta R. Let us use delta to denote the minimum value of the two. Now we need to determine if there are two points, one on each side of the dividing line, that have a distance less than delta from each other. First, we can eliminate all the points that have a distance more than delta from the dividing line, since they cannot be less than delta from any points on the other side of the line. So we only need to consider points in this blue rectangle. Now we look at these points in ascending order by their y coordinates. Recall that we sorted all the points on both their x coordinate and y coordinate. So we go from the lowest point P6 and compute its distance to the points in this blue rectangle above it that might possibly be less than delta away. This seems to be able to eliminate the computation of a lot of the points, but we don't really know how many points are in this blue rectangle for any given input graph. What if for an input graph, all the points are in this blue rectangle? We compute the distance from each point to all the other points above it, we will be right back to big O of n square complexity. Do we have to compute the distances from each point to all the others in this blue rectangle? It turns out that we can further eliminate some calculations. For the lowest point P6 in this blue rectangle, we can imagine a purple box two times delta white and delta high with P6 on its bottom edge. Any points that have a distance to P6 less than delta must be contained in this purple box. So we can check each point in this blue rectangle from the bottom to the top and compute the distance to all other points that are contained in each point's purple box. For instance, we check P6, see how many points are in its purple box, compute all the distances and see if any of them is less than delta. Then we continue with P7 and so on. You may ask again, well, do we know how many points are in each of the purple boxes? What if all points are in the purple box? So we are still taking big O of n square time. Actually, there is a limit of the number of points that can locate in each of the purple box. How many points are at most in each purple box? Recall delta is the minimum distance of any pairs of points that are on the same side of the dividing line. In another word, any pairs of points on the same side have a distance no less than delta. Now let's see how many points can we put inside this purple box? If we have a point here, we cannot have a point here because their distance would be less than delta. So we could have one point here and another point here. We may can put another point here, or we could have a point here, a point here, here, and here that allow us to put five points in the box. Can we do more? Yes. In fact, the number of points that can locate in this purple box at most is six. We see that we can only have six points at most in each of the purple boxes. 
Therefore, we consider all the points in the blue rectangle and check one point at a time from the bottom to the top. For each point, for instance, P6, we only need to check its five succeeding points above it. Since five is a fixed number, the time complexity for checking each purple box is big O of one, and thus checking in the blue rectangle if there is a pair with the distance less than delta has a complexity of big O of n. Let's get back to the pseudocode algorithm for closest pair. The combined step takes big O of n time. The recurrence relation of this algorithm is this. We can tell really quickly that this is the same as merge sort. We know its complexity is big O of n log n. You may recall that we sorted all the points twice based on their x and y coordinates. This pre-sorting process will take big O of n log n time. Adding them together still works out to be in big O of n log n. So the overall complexity of the divide and conquer algorithm for a closest pair problem is still big O of n log n. Indeed, it is better than the big O of n square brute force algorithm. So we did it. We have found a more efficient algorithm. Here are a couple of exercise questions from the textbook again. You may find them helpful. Note that you are not asked to submit them and get them graded. The divide and conquer algorithm for the closest pair problem is a pretty smart one. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see three more problems using divide and conquer next week. So more fun to come. I will see you next week.